Hey everybody on YouTube. Today I thought I'd post another vintage video repair or a follow-up of a repair of a video deck, a very, very rare video deck that I am working on for a customer. Uh, currently I am working on this Sanyo VTC 7100. It's a black and white unusual cassette format and there's virtually none in existence that I am currently aware of that work. I've had several people from around the globe email me and they all have the same, the same condition of the machine just does not work. But currently I've been doing a complete restoration rebuild for a customer in California who absolutely needs this deck. This is probably a one of a kind uh, vintage video repair. I don't think anybody out there has attempted to do what I'm doing on this particular model, but there's a lot of issues. Uh, I'm about 90% done with this unit. Currently, I'm waiting on some parts from Europe, uh, some coils for the video heads, and a few other things to complete this unit, but I've made a lot of progress. I've had three machines I have been using for parts or cannibalizing what parts I could to build a complete working 100% redesign of this VTC 7100 for a customer I have in California. Anyways, this is an update and a follow-up video. Uh, update is the machine is 90% complete. Um, I am waiting on some parts from Europe, but today we're going to do a whole other thing. This is a very rare power supply that this unit uses. These uh, power supplies are virtually impossible to find. It's a very special plug that plugs into the side of these, these units and... Uh, there is no conversion for it, so you have to have the original power supply to use this unit. And on top of it, uh, everybody says, well, can't you just use the battery pack? Well, first of all, the batteries for these units, if you can find them, do not work. They do not charge. They're complete garbage. So you are sort of victim to have to use the power supply to actually use the unit. Well, today we're going to do a power supply repair for the VTC 7100. A lot of people have been asking me, why don't you post videos on how to change out capacitors and what you use? So people out there who are not electronically in knowledge of knowing how to do this will see how I do it so they can repair their own equipment. All right, as you see, this is the power supply. I believe it's the VR2 power supply that actually hooks up to this VTC 7100. This is the only power supply known that actually powers this unit. The problem is it's suffering like everything else on this machine. The capacitors are completely dried out and they're just not working properly. And in this case, the capacitors are just complete garbage. All right, I uh, am gonna actually replace the capacitors on this today. And I wanna show you guys what steps you need to do to actually do this. First of all, you're going to need this stuff called uh, desoldering braid. It's a copper braid that use that you use with solder guns that sucks off sucks the solder off the circuit boards around the actual connection, so you can remove the component. So you're going to want to order yourself some desoldering braid if you want to uh, do this properly. Okay, those uh, desoldering uh, they're like plungers that re that remove the solder. Those things suck. Don't buy those. Those things ain't worth a damn. I prefer using desolder braid. Desoldering braid it does a fantastic job. It cleans up the actual contact so you can remove the component properly. All right, as you can see, I have examples of. Uh, the capacitors in the unit itself, I have to change out three capacitors. One, it's a 1000 microfarad by uh, 35 volt. Uh, the second one is a 470 micro, uh, microfarad by 35 volt. And then I got a small one, which is 100 microfarad, 100 microfarad by 35 volt. Okay. All right. Here's the thing about capacitors. Basically, what I do a rule of thumb, keep the exact capacitance. Okay. So I'm going to replace all three of these, uh, 1,000 microfarad, 100 microfarad, and 470 microfarad. It calls for a 35 volt uh, uh, voltage on these. Okay, uh, basically this thing is only putting out an output of uh, 13 volts. So they used a buffer of 35, uh, 35 volts for you know a safety zone for replacing the capacitors when they made these. All right. No big deal. You could go from 35 volts or higher in the voltage. You do not have to stay at the exact voltage that's used. So today we're going to use a 50 volt by 1000 microfarads, 
470 microfarads and a 100 microfarads, I'm replacing them with higher quality capacitors by uh, by a 50 volt voltage usage uh, of replacements. Okay, basically you want to take the desoldering braid, you want to take your solder gun, and you want to touch the negative and positive where it's soldered to the board. You want to remove the solder cleanly. Then you want to remove the component completely out of off of the board itself. So you get clean holes where they mount and, and the contacts are nice and clean. But remember the, the direction of the capacitor, negative and positive. So you could put the capacitor, the new one in, in the, the correct direction. Or take pictures of it first so you could refer back to the picture to make sure you're replacing the capacitor in the correct way. But anyways, you want to desolder the component with desoldering braid. Get it nice and clean. Then you want to replace the capacitor with a new capacitor uh, with the right capacitance or higher voltage. And you want to resolder those connections tightly and cut off the spare excess of the actual arms of the of the capacitor and get them nice and neat against the board. So you want to use desoldering braid to remove the capacitor and resolder the new capacitor in its place. You're going to need to do this in three places. You're going to have to remove some screws from the bottom of it and you could slightly move the board up out of position so you can get to those contacts to, re to resolder the new capacitors in. The biggest problem with this particular power supply is I would, you know, it would work, but the problem is the capacitors were extremely dried out like on everything else on these three machines. And so I'd get the 13, 12, 13 voltage I need, and then all of a sudden the thing would drop to 6 volts. That means the capacitors were completely dried out and it can't maintain its voltage. That's the reason why you need to replace the capacitors in this VR2 power supply for this actual VTC7100. You want to get... Clean capacitors in there so you have steady power to function the machine when the machine is completely restored. All right, I want to point out something else. Uh, basically, this has to do with the fuses on this unit. There's a fuse in the front, but there's a fuse in the back. Well, the fuse in the back, as you can see, I use a special fuse holder to uh, that ha actually I can solder the connections on the both ends and actually screw it through the base of the unit. They had this rinky dink holder, which was a real piece of junk that's on the back of this thing. You want to replace it and get yourself one of these nice mounting holders, drill a little hole and replace the uh, fuse so it's easy to access when the fuse pops. So that's another custom feature I did for this customer. I put a custom fuse holder there so if the power supply doesn't work, they can take the cover off and they can swap the capacitor out real easy. I mean, not the capacitor, I mean the actual fuse out real easy. So See that little holder, it, you just pop that little fuse out and you can just swap it out real easy. So you want to make everything user friendly, but I put a better fuse holder in there so the fuse can be removed very easily. But there's a one in the front here that's real easy to get to. It's a pigtail uh, fuse. That's real easy to change if they go bad. You just buy a replacement pigtail fuse for it. That was no big deal. But the fuse in the back had a really rinky dink junk uh, fuse holder and just wasn't safe. So I put a custom holder for this customer, so if they have a problem, they could pop out the fuse with a replacement and they'll have no issues. All right, just to let you people out there know, you do need to service the power supply for this VTC7100. It is vital. The capacitors are all dried out, just like the capacitors on the machine itself. I've never seen so many capacitors dried out in my life. This unit is very old, but the capacitors were garbage at that time. They were big and bulky and this type of thing, but they dried out. I mean, every one of these capacitors was dried out, seriously dried out. And if they're dried out, they're not going to let the electrons flow smoothly. So basically, uh, you, you know, you're going to create shorts in the board or shorts in the power supply. So the best thing to do when you service a Sanyo VTC7100, replace all the capacitors. And in, in my case, it's been replacing virtually almost every part there there is on this unit. Transistors, you name it. This customer is going to get a brand new machine. And like I said, if you have this machine out there and you want me to do it, it is not cheap to fix this machine. There is no parts. I have to do a lot of custom parts for this machine. And I actually have to rebuild the machine like it's brand new, like you bought it out of a store. So you are going to pay a high price for the repair. So if you have any questions about fixing the power supply or fixing the VTC7100 in general, drop me an email and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.